This video will demonstrate how to view custom action triggers and discuss the fields that are important for library staff in understanding and requesting changes to action triggers in Sitka's Evergreen. Action triggers are used by Sitka's Evergreen to run automatic processes including generating notifications to patrons, setting items to lost, and auto-renewing items. Some action triggers are shared and used by all libraries in Sitka. Some action triggers can be set up per library and the parameters customized for the library. Local system administrators can view the custom action triggers in place for their library by going to Administration, Local Administration, Notifications Action Triggers. Initially, the interface will indicate that there is nothing to display. In the Owning Library column, click on Filter. Enter your library code. Multi-branch libraries should enter their system level code and check the box for descendants. The custom action triggers for the library will display. The enabled column shows you which triggers are currently on. The processing delay column indicates when the action will be triggered. Action triggers for courtesy notices, hold expires soon, and patron account expires soon will have negative numbers. This is so the action trigger runs before the event takes place. For example, the three-day courtesy notice is set to run minus four days so that it goes out three days before the item's due date. Overdue and lost notices are sent a specified number of days after the item's due date has passed. For example, a seven-day overdue notice is sent seven days after the item's due date. Some action triggers run a certain amount of time after an action takes place. For example, a hold pickup action trigger with a delay of 30 minutes will send an email to the patron 30 minutes after the item is captured to fill their hold. Libraries can request changes to the processing delays of custom action triggers. The reactor column indicates what action will be taken when the trigger runs. Libraries will see send email, send SMS, or mark item lost. Double click on the action trigger you would like to view. Scroll down to the template field. Look for subject. The subject and following text can be customized. It's important to note that text within square brackets is code to pull relevant information from the database. Here we'll go through a three day courtesy notice. The subject of the email is library courtesy notice. This can be customized. Most email notifications include the line, this is an automated message, please do not reply to this email. If a patron does reply to the email, it will go to the email address that has been set in the library setting, sending email address for patron notices. Next, we have code to pull the current date when the notice is sent. The first and last name of the patron comes next. Evergreen will pull the name of the relevant patron. It will use preferred names and fall back to primary names if there's no preferred name. The next section is about the item or items that are about to be due. It is prefaced with, our records indicate these items will be due soon, the text of which can be customized. For our example notice, Evergreen will pull the title, author, call number, barcode, due date, and circulating library for each item. This section is followed by the text, please return the above items on time to avoid fines where applicable. The text of this can also be customized. The next section can be ignored as it is code telling the system how to build part of the following URL. Here we have a link to log into Evergreen's My Account. Evergreen pulls the library code and province to build the link. It is critical that libraries have their province entered in their mailing address as BC MB, or ON. Otherwise, the link won't build correctly and your patrons won't be able to use it. Mailing address is found under Administration, Server Administration, Organizational Units. Libraries using a discovery layer can have the URL for their discovery layer's patron account here instead. Next is the contact information for your library. The code will pull in your library name, the mailing address, and phone number. All of this comes from the information entered for your library in the organizational units interface. 
Email notifications can also include text to help combat phishing. The default text for this is, if you ever have any doubts of the legitimacy of an email message or notification claiming to be from your library name, please contact the library. Most email notifications also include information on how patrons can opt out of receiving email notifications. This is controlled by the checkbox, Receive Overdue and Courtesy Emails, found in the Patron account in the Staff Client and in the Notification Preferences section of My Account. This text is not present on Hold Ready for Pickup notifications as patrons select their method of notification when placing the hold. You must contact Co-op Support to request changes to any of your custom action triggers. Making changes to an action trigger and clicking Save will have no effect. You will see the message Update Failed. When requesting changes, please include the name of the action trigger found in the Name column, the specific wording you'd like to change, and if applicable, the desired processing delay. Co-op support recommends copying the text from the template field, making your desired changes, and then submitting the updated text to support. For more information on patron notifications and to see available notifications that your library may not currently use, please see the Patron Notifications chapter in Sitka's Evergreen documentation. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.